Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1985 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. On the mound for the Tigers today is Burt Blylevin, whose 1984 record was 7-3 with a 3.58 ERA. And pitching for the Yankees is Stefan Weaver, whose 1984 record was 10 and 6 with a 3.46 ERA. Okay, we had opening day uh, yesterday and we lost 4 to nothing. We got had nothing going right for us at all. Uh, the only good thing that occurred was Dan Petrie pitching seven solid innings, uh, striking out four. Uh, Dan Petrie is one of those pitchers in our sim uh, since we began it back in 1980 who has not shown any prowess to being a starting pitcher up until last year um, when he sort of turned it around. He pitched over 200 innings. So I'm glad to see that making Dan Petrie the staff ace was the right move. He pitched really well. It just wasn't meant to be. We had a couple of errors, um, and that added to the uh, the Yankees' 4 to nothing victory. Bob Tewksbury, who pitched for the Yankees, was uh, absolutely unhittable. He didn't walk anybody either, of course. Uh, that is his thing. And uh, it was pretty much over early on. So a bummer of an opening day. We have game two today where we're going to start Burt Blylevin, who has a very low baseball mogul rating. It's rate, he's rated a 73. Uh, and I'm not really certain how that is going to play uh, in the 1985 season. For as long as we've had Burt, which is essentially for two years, uh, for two seasons, uh, he's been injured in both seasons. So uh, I'm hoping that he can be uh, efficient and productive and stay healthy and, for a whole season. And if not, we certainly have AAA pitchers who can come up and fill that role. Uh, so we have to uh, hope the best for uh, Burt Blylevin. We're facing off against Stefan Weaver, who was born in Germany and, of course, Burt Blylevin was born in the Netherlands. So uh, an international game today. So let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button for me. And be a subscriber so you can get in on our giveaways. We give away prizes every 40 games or quarterly, I suppose, is another way to look at it. So here's uh, Burt Blylevin, and you'll see that his... Stats versus the current Yankee lineup are not so good. Yankees are batting 301 against him with a 438 slugging percentage. That's in 79 plate appearances. All the bullpen is available today, just in case. And we're going to go with basically the same lineup. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, this is the exact same lineup as yesterday's game. I was considering putting Kevin Bass in there at the DH role and then moving Brett to third. But actually Doug Baker played pretty good uh, in game one. He had two hits and a stolen base. And I'm like, why would I take out the best player in game one? <laughs> he did commit an error though, so we have to consider that. All right, let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the Detroit Tigers. Batting leadoff in center field is Willie Wilson batting second. And DHing is George Brett. Batting third at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting cleanup playing left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting fifth at first base is Kenny Smith. Batting sixth in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting seventh in catching is Terry Kennedy. Batting eighth at third base is Doug Baker. And batting ninth is the second baseman, Lou Whitaker. Okay, Stefan Weaver is the starting pitcher for the Yankees. As I mentioned, he was born in Germany, a sixth-round draft pick out of Cal Santa Barbara. Uh, at the time he was drafted, he was the tallest Yankee player at six foot eight. Uh, he only pitched one game in the majors. That was in uh, 1980, uh, and in that game, he injured his shoulder and never pitched again. So only one game ever in the major leagues, and you can see that he's had a, a pretty good career. Um, he was a uh, rookie in our 1980 sim, and he's been productive. Last year he got injured for two months, which is why 
Uh, he did not top the 200 mark, 200 innings pitch mark. Uh, he passed away uh, just a couple of years ago in December of 2022. Uh, you can see he went 10 and 6 last year with a 3.46 ERA, 106 strikeouts and 148 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are betting 230 against him, four complete games, and one shutout. His fastball tops out at 92 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 47.7%. And look at this, he actually has a personal catcher. Rod Hassan, you don't see that very often. I never choose a personal catcher for any of my pitchers. Uh, the only time we ever tried that, I believe, was in the 82 season, where we traded for Bryn Smith and the catcher Bobby Ramos. And we decided, since they were both from the Expos, we would give Bobby Ramos as Bryn Smith's first uh, uh, option as a personal catcher. I don't think it made a difference. He does have two pitches, a changeup rated in 88 and a fastball rated in 87, overall rated in 89. The 26-year-old righty is a free agent at the end of the 87 season. Also of note, you'll see that his health is a 63, so well below league average. I think the game has kind of uh, put him in a position now where he might be on the decline despite having a good career. And uh, no, I thought he was Rookie of the Year, but he wasn't. He's a two-time Gold Glove winner and two-time All-Star. Let's take a look at the Yankees' defense. It is the same lineup as opening day. Uh, so in right field is Danny Tartable, uh, well below league average defensively, and at first base is Dennis Worth, just a tick below league average. Ron Hassey behind the plate. We were two for two against him stealing yesterday. Okay, here we go. Willie Wilson leading it off. We need to have a much better offensive output today as Wilson lines out to short. One down. Next man up is George Brett. He went one for four in opening day. He's one for seven against Weaver in his career. And he lines out to second. Two quick outs for Weaver. That'll bring up Alan Trammell. Trammell went one for four on opening day, and he grounds out the third. So a one, two, three inning for Weaver. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Yankees lineup for today. Batting leadoff in center field is Otis Nixon. Batting second at second base is Willie Randolph. Batting third at third base is Fritzy Connolly. Batting cleanup in right field is Danny Tartable. Batting fifth and DHing is Nelson Simmons. Batting sixth in left field is Steve Kemp. Batting seventh at first base is Dennis Worth. Batting eighth and catching is Ron Hasse. Batting ninth at shortstop is the Wizard, Ozzy Smith. Okay, Bird Bly Levin, of course, making his first start of the year. You'll see what uh, Bly Levin has done for us. We did trade for him in the 1982 season, so he split the season between the two teams, uh, being only slightly more effective as a Tiger. And then he got off such a great start in 83 before he got injured, 7-1, a 288 ERA. He was pitching so good, and then he got uh, injured for the rest of the year. The same thing happened last year as we were making our run to the World Series. He was injured after 13 starts at 7-3 with a 3.58 ERA, 63 strikeouts, and 88 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 257 against him, two complete games, and two shutouts. If you look at his skills, you can see the precipitous drop-off um, since we've got him, I guess it was at age 30, and then bloop, bloop, and then bloop, all the way down to a 73. Uh, his fastball still tops out at 89 miles an hour, he is a fly ball pitcher 65% of the time. His fastball, oh, I'm sorry, he doesn't have a fastball, really. I mean, it says he does, but it's not really made. The only pitch he's got that's effective at all is the sidearm curve, which is rated as an 80. The overall rated as 73. The 33-year-old righty is a free agent at the end of next year. So we have got to get through this year with him one way or another, and then... Next year, we can at least cut him, and we would pay him half of his salary to cut him $150,000. Right now, we would pay $300,000.
for, for the two years because you have to pay half of what he's owed. Um, I also have him on the block to be traded, uh, but no one's going to want a, a pitcher with a 73 rating. So we are stuck with Burt Blylevin. Here's our defense. It's the same as opening day. We're great everywhere. Behind the plate is Terry Kennedy with that 80 rating, but with a 78 rated arm. So uh, he did well last year throwing out base runners, but it is really not his forte. And they've got a speedy guy leading off. It's Otis Nixon against Bird Blylevin. Let's see what Bird's got to offer. He's going to throw a lot of junk up there, a lot of off speed stuff. He does get a ground ball to Tremor. He has to hurry to get Nixon one down. Here's Willie Randolph. He took an over on opening day. Here he lines out to left. One down. Bird by 11. Facing Fritzy Connolly with two down. Connolly does have a home run. And a 1 2 3 inning as Connolly strikes out. I totally expected Bly 11 to get. Absolutely jammed up there, but you go to the top of the second, no score. And Gibby will lead it off. Gibby had a very poor, no good, don't do it opening day. He went 0 for 4 with the golden sombrero. He struck out all four times. Hey, he makes contact this time, popping it up down the third baseline. It's out number one. Four in a row for Weaver. This is the Weaver we've come to expect. Just does not give up a lot of base hits. Doesn't walk too many. And if you want to get to him, you kind of got to get to him early. Otherwise, he just gets into a groove. Kenny Smith pops up, and Wilson will fly out to center. So far, no base runners. We go to the bottom of the second, and Danny Tartable will lead it off. I mentioned in a comment yesterday that Tartable was on the Tigers, and then we turned around and traded him. Is that true? No, it is not true. I, I, I questioned that after I commented, so I take that back to uh, James Kenny. For some reason, I thought he was in our minor league system after a trade, but I'm wrong. Okay, here we go. Danny Tartable leading it off versus Burt, and Bly Levin walks him. So there's the first base runner. A leadoff walk to Tartable. Those usually come back to haunt you. Next man up is Nelson Simmons. He flies out to right. For out number one. And Steve Kemp, who hit the only home run in game one. Steps to the plate. And he lines it to center. A frozen rope right at Wilson. Two down and the first baseman, Dennis Worth. One for four on opening day. Flips it out to right field where Glenn Wilson will make the catch. It was Wilson and Baker that made errors on opening day. Wilson, someone who almost never makes an error. So I hope he's got that out of the way. We go to the top of the third. Here's TK. Kennedy, one for three opening day. Rips it into right. Get down. Oh, it's going to carry deep enough for Tartable to make the catch. And if we had any offensive hero in game one, it would have been Doug Baker. As I mentioned, he went two for three with a stolen base. Pounds it into the dirt in front of home plate. Ooh. As he picks it up and guns him out at first. Two down for Whitaker. Can Weaver get through the entire uh, Tiger lineup without giving up a hit? There we go, Whitaker with a base hit. He's off the schneid with his first hit of the year. Runner on first, and Willie Wilson, who, by the way, is four for eight against Stefan Weaver. Popping it up. Mm. It's just tough to get anything going. I considered stealing there, but uh, Whitaker just is not a, in real life, he wasn't a stolen base guy. I think he got the 20 stolen bases one time. So just not his thing. We go to the bottom of the third. Here's Ron Hasse leading it off. Hasse two for four on opening day. Ground ball to third. And Baker making the easy play. One down. We're going to pull third base in. 
I don't think the wizard will drop a bunt for a hit. But I, I, I like to try to psych the batter out, even though I know it's just a ball, you know, it's just a computer game. But sometimes I feel like it works. And baseball fans are superstitious, so why not give it a go? Okay, well, we got through the Yankees lineup one time without giving up a hit, just the one walk. And we're back to Otis Nixon. And there's your infield single. Damn it. I pulled the wrong... <laughs> I put, pulled the third baseman in for the wrong batter. So Nixon beats out the infield single. Will he be running? I would imagine, says Burt, does not have a fastball. He has to be going. He's gone. Oh, he gets thrown out on the curveball. What? That makes no sense at all. So Kennedy... Throwing out Otis Nixon, we go to the top of the fourth. No score and only one hit apiece. George Brett will take a walk to begin the fourth. That will give us a chance to hit and run. That is a specialty of Alan Trammels. Let's get the runners going. And a base hit to right. That's easy for Brett to go to third. First and third. Nobody out. We got something going on. We will go on contact, assuming Gibby can make contact. He's 2 for 17 against Weaver, and he's coming off a career year, but he's 0 for 5 with four strikeouts. There we go. A three-run shot to dead center field, and the Tigers are on the board. That's our first runs of the year. Gibby hits the first home run for the team. If you had Gibby in your uh, first home run pool, you are the winner. All right, now I'm breathing a little easier. Smith strikes out. He's 0 for 6 this year. One down. Glenn Wilson, he shoots it into the gap in right center. 385 to the wall, and he has a stand-up double. So we've got two extra base hits. That's the first double for Wilson. You'll see that his home run total dropped in half in his terrible sophomore season, really. But he did up his doubles, and now he's got his uh, first double of the season. Can we get TK to drive him in? Runner in scoring position, one, two. And a base hit to right, that will score Wilson. And it's four nothing, Detroit. This, this is um, exactly what I was saying. You kind of have to get to Weaver early or you may not get to him at all. Doug Baker will take a walk. I feel like almost in some way, Doug Baker should be a number two hitter on this team. You wouldn't think that of him, but he just does seem to produce. First and second, full count, and Whitaker rolls it on down to first for a double play. Well, we can't feel bad about getting four runs in the fourth. It's four nothing. We go to the bottom half of the inning, and it is Willie Randolph leading it off, followed by Connolly and Tartable. Wildevin jams Randolph inside, but he still manages to hit a laser to right. One down. Connolly with the ground ball to third. Baker making the play. Wildevin is sufficient. He's got only thrown 33 pitches here with two down. And he strikes out Tartable, second K for Blylevin. I mean, that's the thing about Blylevin. As long as he can stay healthy, somehow he produces, even with a, you know, truncated rating. We go to the top of the fifth inning, and Wilson walks. Well, he absolutely has to go. He did have a stolen base on opening day. Let's see if... Weaver throws the fastball or the changeup? He threw mostly changeups to Wilson. First pitch going. Slow inside, and he steals second. That is number two for Willie Wilson. Runner in scoring position now for George Brett. Brett struggled against Weaver. One for eight. And he pops it up. The Wizard making the catch. One out for Trammell. 
Oh, Trammell striking out on the inside pitch. Well, we got the leadoff guy to second, and we are about to get shut down. Oh, no, Jimmy! A double gong day! A two-run shot to right field, 434 feet. Two home runs, five RBIs for Gibby. He is more than making up for the golden sombrero. Oh, man, I'm, I'm glad Gibby is off to a uh, better start than he game one foretold. And uh, Kenny Smith still hitless. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Burt Lyleman at 40 pitches. It's the fifth inning, so I can sort of see him give up some runs here. Simmons with a ground ball to short. One out. This is the one guy in the lineup you got to watch. Steve Kemp. Ground ball to short. Trim out. Making the play. And Dennis Worth. Full count. Strikes out looking. So Blyleven through five with a 73 rating. I would not have thought that would be possible. We go to the top of the sixth, and Glenn Wilson will lead it off. Weaver's at 90 pitches. He could probably go about 125 before he gets tired. Wilson lines out to short. TK. A tapper back to Weaver. And Doug Baker, 0 for 1 with a walk today. And a base hit to center field. They all gets past the center fielder for a triple. Oh, man. Nicely done. Good hustle by Baker. Of course, that's his first triple this year. And that's going to do it for Weaver. They're going to bring in Steve Fry, a left-hander. He was a rookie last year, and he was very good. 5-3 and three with a 179 ERA. 207 opponents batting average. He had one save. No blueies. 89-mile-an-hour fastball. Ground ball percentage is 42.8%. The fastball is really his only good pitch. Rated an 86. Overall rated an 80. 21-year-old lefty. Is arbitration eligible at the end of next year. And Whitaker, who batted 231 versus lefties last year, will get a shot. I, you, you play Whitaker, lefty and righty, and he lines out the third. And that will do it. Okay. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and Burt will come back out. He's only thrown 55 pitches. Ron Hassey leading it off, and a base hit to left. Okay. That's the second hit against Blylev, and he's also walked the batter. 0-1 count to Smith, and he pops it up. I thought for sure in the fifth inning the game would um, make Blylevin give up a run or two. Let's see if it's going to be this inning. Leadoff man gets on. Tough to double up with Hassey and Nixon, but Nixon is gunned out. At first he's been thrown out stealing, and he's doubled up. We go to the top of the seventh inning, and we've got a shutout going today. Willie Wilson leading it off. There's the in-game stats. As Wilson walks to start off the inning. Steve Fry, they brought back out. We don't need to steal up six in the seventh inning. We'll let George Brett swing away. Lefty on lefty, and Brett hit lefties very well last year. And, oh, man, that was ball four. Brett was swinging full count, and he gets a base hit. A little duck snort into right center field. Wilson going to third. If Brett wasn't a future Hall of Famer, that might get you ear hold up six, swinging on a 3-0 count. First and third. Trammell at the plate. Trammell, base hit to center field. Wilson scores. Brett will go to third. Yes, he's safe. A 70% chance. Um, I, as I was saying yes, I was thinking maybe I shouldn't, but I guess if Brett's going to swing 3-0, he can go to third up seven. It's first and third, and Gibby has a chance at a three-home run ball game. 
Nobody out. 2-2 two -two count. And Gibby goes down looking. Yeah, that's a tough call. There's out number one. What about Kenny Smith? Smith does not hit lefties well. Wow, Kenny Smith. Second strikeout today. And Glenn Wilson pulls it to third. All right, well, we got our run. Stranded everybody else. We go to the bottom of the seventh. I know that it would be nice to have Burp Lelevin get a complete game shutout. But if he gets through this inning unscathed, I think I might pull him. We want to keep him as healthy as we can. And there's no point in burning him out. Uh, you know. We're into a single. Randolph got that into a single after all. Uh, there's no point in burning him out, but I, I think he's going to get touched here. Well, maybe not. Connolly popping it up. All of Burt's off-speed stuff is working today. Let's get a double play and get out of this. 1-0 count to Tartable. Oh, that shot right past Baker at third. Randolph will hold it second. First and second, one out. Here's Nelson Simmons. He's 0 for 2 today. 1-2. There we go. Off the end of the bat to short and... A double play will end the inning. Defense coming through. Pitching is great. Offense is uh, all aspects of the game working. It's just nice to see. Here we go. Top of the eighth inning with TK. Ooh, striking out. Third strikeout for Fry. He's thrown 24 pitches. I'm surprised he's not tired. Infield single for Baker. That is the third infield single combined today. It's kind of ridiculous. Highly unlikely. Let's hit and run with Whitaker. We'll stay on the double play and maybe a base hit uh, you know, through the right side of the infield. That's going to be a fly ball. Oh, number two and Willie Wilson. 0 for 2 with a stolen base today. Copy it up. All right. <coughs> Pardon me, folks. I mean, Boy Levin has only thrown 77 pitches, but I, I do think we got to think long term. If he's going to pitch this well, and we know that he's going to get blowed up in his second start, right? He'll probably give up five runs. But we're trying to win today. So out comes Burt Blylevin, and guess who's coming in? It's the Creeper, Paul Gibson. You might see him looking at you in the shower. Doesn't really mean anything. He's just a Creeper. <laughs> That's the best nickname that we've given anybody. And you'll see his stats. He's been good. He does not have to register wherever he moves. 2-2 two -two count. And he strikes out Steve Kemp. One down. Here's Dennis Worth. He's hit to center field. That's the fifth hit for the Yankees. Runner on first, Ron Hassey. Got a 206 versus lefties last year. Popping it up. Catchable in shallow right field. Looks like Whitaker went back and made the play. Ozzie Smith with two down and a 2-0 count. He's 0-2 today. A ground ball to first. Kenny Smith making the play. So the Yankees won 4-0 on opening day, and we are on the verge of shutting them out in return. It's very strange. Brett popping up. How is he not tired at 34 pitches? His endurance is that of a single-inning pitcher. Kramer strikes out, and Gibby, looking for number three strikes out. Okay, that's just dumb. And another dumb thing from this game, we go to the bottom of the ninth. Great job by Paul Gibson. Not a safe situation. Let's bring in Frank LaCourt. 
Now we made a, a call in spring training. We rehired, we re-signed Frank Lacourt despite his low rating, because he had a low rating last year and he was so good for us. And then we gave him the job over Carl Willis, another righty in the bullpen. So let's see if he's up to the task. He's going to have to face Otis Nixon. He's the top of the lineup, Nixon, Randolph, and Connolly. 3-1 count, and he walks Nixon. That is a bad thing to do. They're up seven runs. There would be no reason for him to be running here. There's a ground ball to second. Tough double play. Oh, my gosh. That's our fourth double play today. And it is down to Fritzy Connolly. Tigers looking for their first win this year. Ground ball to treble. And the Tigers win 7 to nothing. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Okay, that is a good victory. Great job by Burt Blylevin. Let's take a look at the standings. Not a lot to see yet. Everybody has played. Baltimore's 2-0. Milwaukee's 0-2. There's no surprise there. We're right in the middle of the pack. Chicago and Seattle, as you might expect, are 1-0. I think they're going to be battling it out. And National League, let's see. Everyone has played. New York, Pittsburgh, Montreal. I mean, you get the picture. Okay. Headline news. Brainiac Baseball did a week. A 6-3 win puts the White Sox in first. Chicago's number three hitter, Dale Svame, anchored the offense with two hits and two homers. Three RBI. Britt Burns pitched strongly for seven and third. Gave up two home runs. Then Boddicker's five Ks uh, helps them win five to nothing. Did he get a complete game? It was a shutout, number one of the year. Okay, well. Lavelle Freeman, the rookie, went four for five with a steal and a run. And Dave Stegman had two hits. The Stegosaurus. Very cool. Okay. Transactions. Anything of note? Yes. Oh, Glenn Gulliver. Every year he gets injured. Six weeks for a dislocated hip. I mean, when he's able to play a full year, he's very productive. But he continues to get injured. And the Cubs uh, will miss him for 41 days. So who will be the third baseman for the Cubs? That's what we want to know. Let's find out who's in their lineup. Oh, I haven't gone through and updated the logos. I had to wait for the, uh, for the uh, Seattle Pilots season to end so I could do the logos properly. Oh, Lenny Randall will get... The uh, third base duty, and he's a 60 rating. He did get 152 at-bats last year, and he batted 257. Terrible defensively. All right, well, somebody's got to do it. I'm guessing they don't have anybody else to play third. Yeah, I mean, nobody designated as a third baseman. Rand Smolenix is out there on the uh, free agent market. Let's go ahead and pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel, please. I appreciate that. Uh, a 7-0 victory. Player of the game is definitely Kirk Gibson. Double dong day. Five ribeye. Um, Glenn Wilson had a double. Doug Baker had a triple. Burp Lylevin threw a Seven innings, a shutout ball. Four hits and a walk. I mean, that's a below one whip. That almost never happens. The creeper came in, creeping around the mound, got three outs, and Frank LaCourt did all right. He walked a leadoff guy, got the double play. Um, well, I guess there were only three double plays, but it felt like a ton. That doesn't feel right. Stefan Weaver takes the loss, giving up six runs in five and two-third innings. Okay, folks, that'll do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with the third and final game of the series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.